Okay, open your Bibles with me to uh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I know they read earlier today verses 12 through 19, but I'm going to pick up at verse 25. I'm going to pick up at uh, John chapter 8, verse 25. Verse 25, then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. Amen. On this Father's Day, I want to talk from the subject, who's your daddy? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and ask the question, who's your daddy? Look on the other side. Ask the person on the other side, who is your daddy? In uh, this particular passage that we're reading, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. They are um, the religious cult of their day. They are the people who thought they had it all together and put themselves in the position of being greater, better, higher than others. But Jesus has a conversation with them and shares some truth about them, and ultimately he's asking them about their father. They, he's talking to them about his father, and they think he's talking about his earthly father, but he's talking about his spiritual father. Some of you are here today, and many of you, some of you don't know who your biological father might be. Maybe he didn't want to know, you didn't know who he was, maybe he disappeared, escaped, I don't know what the drama for some of you might have been in your life, but here's what I do know. I do know that even though you may not know who your biological father might be, I'm here to tell everybody you can have a spiritual father who will look after you and take care of you. As a matter of fact, while Jesus is talking to them about this, he, he says to them in verse 59, look at verse 59 for just a moment. He says in verse, matter of fact, before I go to verse 59, let me read verse, um, verse 44. Can y'all turn and look at verse 44? He says, look at what Jesus says to them while he's talking to them about fatherhood. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of the father you want to do he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Do y'all see that? He tells these jokers, the devil is your daddy. And in verse 59, because he said that, look, are y'all with me? Verse 59. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. They wanted to kill him because he said their daddy is the devil. Here's the truth of the matter. Let me give you a nutshell what I'm going to talk about with you today because I want to tell you with clarity, you can tell who you are based on your actions and you are a reflection of your daddy. Maury Povich used to have a television program they came on. How many of y'all know who Maury Povich is? Yeah, Maury, Maury Povich had a show, lasted on TV for about 31 years. Uh, he came on TV and he made a, uh, made a lot of money asking, making this one lone statement to men. 
you are the, you are the father. He'd make that statement. They'd run the DNS, the DNA test, and through that DNA test, when they came back that this man was the father, he said, and you are the father. Wow. Now, what often happened, sometimes the women would uh, be shocked and amazed when he said, you are not the father. And the woman would grab her head and run off the stage. Ah! Now, what kind of a woman doesn't know who their baby daddy is? I hesitated to tell the 9 o'clock crowd that, but I thought I could tell the 12, the 11.30 crowd. I thought y'all could accept that a little more freely. But the fact of the matter is, what kind of a woman doesn't know who the father is? And here's the fact, here's the problem. Here's what I want to talk about with you today. Jesus is saying, I am a reflection of my father. I am who I am because of who my father is. And I want to ask the question, what is your lifestyle demonstrating who your father might be? Because, you know, the women sometimes would be confused or they say, this, yeah, he, I know he the daddy, he the daddy. His eyes is just like his father's eyes. His nose, look at his ears, look at this. And then she found out later he wasn't. But here's the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter is you are a reflection of whoever calls the shots in your life, whoever's your boss, who's ever your lead, whoever your daddy is, you are a reflection of your father. I feel tension in the room. I feel stress in the room. I feel kickback. I feel some kickback in the audience. Because I want to challenge you today and let you see with clarity, Jesus says basically in his discussion with the Pharisees, he is in essence saying to them, I am in fact a reflection of my father. They thought he was talking about his biological father, but he was talking about his spiritual father. And, and then he begins to give us a series of things that demonstrates that he represents his father. Let me ask you to go to verse 26 very quickly. I'm just going to run down through five things. Somebody say five things. There's, there's five points today. Tell your neighbor, he only got five points today. Here's the first thing he said about his father. He said in verse 26, I have many things, verse 26, I have many things to say and to judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world the things which I heard from him. Here's the first thing he says about his father. He says, I'm communicating what I heard. Somebody say heard. Say that one more time, heard. He said, I'm, I'm telling you what I heard. See, see, he, here's what Jesus is saying. I'm not making up stuff. I'm not re making up my own philosophies or my own thoughts. I'm telling you what I heard my father say. Now, I thought this was important to talk about because I, I don't know if y'all have any kids who don't always hear what you're trying to tell them. Anybody here ever had some kids that you told them one thing, but they, it just went right over their head, went in the ear, one ear came out the other? You, you're trying to save them the drama of the mistakes that you have made in the journey of your life, and they don't hear it. They, they are dumb and numb to it. Y'all ain't never had that? Hold up. If y'all ain't never had it, that means you the one that don't listen to what your daddy told you. But the fact and the sad of the problem is that somebody down the street can come and tell the same thing that we've been telling them, and all of a sudden the light pops on, but they didn't hear it when their daddy was trying to tell them, I can't get no help up in here today. They, they, they will finally hear it from some celebrity or somebody else, but here you've been trying to tell them it the whole time, but they listen to everything but you. The fact of the matter is, are you listening to your father? Have you listened to your father? Somebody say, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. That word heard means I've come to know, this is what it means, the word heard means I've come to know that what I've been told is true. I've come to know what I've been told is true. 
And the fact of the matter is, I love this. Jesus says, I've been hanging around my father, and I heard what he told me, and I'm speaking to the world the things that he told me. That's why we listen to Jesus. Jesus came to speak about what his heavenly father told him. This is why we have confidence in Jesus. This is why we trust him, because he speaks to us the things that the God of the universe spoke to him. I'm wondering if I look at your life, will I see what you have been listening to? Somebody got it. Who said that right there? Who said it? Thank you. Amen. That's a woman got eight kids. She know exactly what I'm talking about right here. But he didn't stop there. He said, I not only heard him, he says in verse number 28, look at verse 28. He says, then Jesus said to them, verse 28, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He and that I do nothing of myself, but has my Father taught me, somebody say taught me, not only heard from the Father, His Father, He said, my Father taught me, He instructed me, He gave me directions, He taught me. He says, I am, I am sharing, communicating, I am speaking the things that He taught me. Some, I, I wish I had somebody to hear what I'm saying today. God, Jesus gives us instructions for life. Okay, y'all not, not feeling this. Let me see. I need, to, I need to help y'all understand that your choices, your decisions, your actions, the people you hang out with, the music you listen to, the shows you watch, the movies you engage, the channels you subscribe to, the stuff that you do is a reflection of what you've been taught. <laughs> The people you like to be around, the, the conversations that you have, the relations that you engage in are a reflection of what you have been taught. Jesus says, what you see in my life, I've been taught by my Father. He didn't stop there. Let me roll on. I'm going to be finishing in just a few minutes. Here's the third thing he says right here in verse number 29. Can I read verse 29? I want to read verse 29. Y'all don't mind me talking about verse 29. Verse 29 say, can you please talk about me? Let me talk about verse 29. Verse 29 says, and he who sent me. Somebody say, sent me. I need somebody to hear this right here. Jesus said, not only did I, not only did the Father, did I hear him, not only did he teach me, but he sent me. That's what he said. He who sent me, he has, he, oh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but your father sends you. Your father commissions you. Your father anoints you. Your father, and you know what the word sent means? It means you are commissioned to bring an important message. Y'all missed a great spot to say amen. You know what some of y'all don't realize? you don't realize that God has called and anointed you to be a messenger for his kingdom. You have people in your fellowship. You got people on your job. You got people in your circle of friends who need the message that God has sent you to bring to them. God gifted you, God anointed you, God called you, hold up. God delivered you from what you were bound in so you could take a message back to the group of people that you were caught up in your mess with and take a message to them and tell them that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer, Jesus is our deliverer, Jesus is our way maker. Somebody lean over and tell your neighbor, he sent you, he sent you, he sent you. He empowered you, he gifted you, he anointed you to tell the message, to give the message of salvation to somebody. God sent you. You've been sent. You've, been, you've heard him, you've been taught by him. He sent you. Hold up, I'm almost finished. Here's number four. Number four is in verse number 29 also. It says, he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Look at this. For I always do those things that please him. Let me say that. I always do the things that please him. Let me say it one more time. Jesus said, I always do the things that please him. 
Can you say that? Can you say, I always do the things that please him? Here's, here's what Jesus is saying. One of the characteristics of the fact that I have a relationship with the Father is I do that which pleases him. Somebody say, please him. Doing what's pleasing to God. Are you doing the things in your life that are pleasing to God? Would the God of the universe be happy when he watches and sees your activities? when he listens to your conversations? Can he walk in the room and sit down in the room next to you and watch the program that you're watching on television? I feel tension in the room. There's tension in the room. Can he read the magazine that you're reading? Can he listen to the music that you're listening to? What? Let me, go ahead and, let me go ahead and encourage myself. Preach on, Pastor Jenkins. Go ahead and tell the truth, Pastor. I can tell when y'all, I'm hitting y'all because y'all get quiet. Y'all don't say nothing. When I'm coming down your street, when I talk about y'all, y'all get real quiet. I'm almost finished. I'm coming to a close. I'm bringing this to a conclusion. I'm pulling my plane into the, the I'm about to take this land and I'm pulling my car into the garage. I'm putting the dishes in the dishwasher. I'm bringing my boat into the dock. I'm just about finished. But I'm just trying to take a survey of who your daddy is. Finally, he says in verse number 38, did y'all get the first thing I said? Yes. What was that? Heard him. Heard him. Number two? Yes. Number three? Yes. Number four? Yes. Here's number five. It's in verse 38. Slide down to verse 38. My closing point is in verse 38. 38, verse 38 is my last thing I'm going to say. He says, I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. Oh, y'all missed a great spot to say amen. He says, he says, verse 38, I'm speaking, I'm communicating, I'm sharing what I have seen with my father. Oh, I feel a shout down in my soul. You know why? I'm shouting because God's presence in my life, my father has helped me to see God. When you have a relationship with God, he allows you to see life. He allows you to see his presence. He allows you to see his power. He allows you to see his might. I don't know where y'all are, but I see God in life. I see him when I walk outside. I see him when I look in the sky. I see him when I look at a tree. I see him when I see the waters flowing. I see the power and presence of a holy God who is the creator of the universe and the creator of the world. I see God. He opened my eyes to see his presence. As a matter of fact, not only do I see his presence in life, not only do I see his presence in nature, I see his hand in the affairs of my life. There was a time I had questions about why things happened to me, but he gave me beauty for my ashes. He turned my ashes into beauty and he helped me see life. Oh, I can go back over my life and things I once questioned, he's helped me to see that his hand was all in whatever I went through. I had to lose that in order to get this. I had to go through that in order to be here. I had to suffer then in order to be victorious now. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? I see God. I see God. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You can't make me question question him. I know too much about him. I see God. Somebody dap up your neighbor and say, I see God. I see him through the circumstances of my life. I see him opening doors. I see him closing doors. I see him shutting down things. I see him giving me victories. I see him proving himself strong. I see him making himself mighty. I see God. I didn't see him before. I was blinded by him. The devil had me blinded, but I can see him now.
Anybody here ever seen God? Anybody know he's alive? Anybody got their eyes open? Somebody say, I see my daddy. I know who my daddy is. I know who my daddy is. Hallelujah. I'm celebrating because I haven't always seen what I needed to see. My eyes haven't always been open, but they open now. I see God. I see him. I see him. I know he's alive and well. I know he's real. Somebody say, I know he's real. If you know what I'm talking about, find somebody and high five them and say, I know he's real. I know the God I serve is alive and well. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God he saved me. I see God. Somebody say, I see God. I speak what I've seen, Jesus said. I'm talking about what I've seen with my own eyes. I see God. Now, I don't, I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But let me, let me just close with this. God wants you to see him. I know your life has been dramatic and painful. I know you have questioned the existence of God. I know you've had doubts and questions, but I got one great message for you. If you reach out to God, he'll reach back out to you. If you give God a try, if you just say to him, if you are the true God, can you just show me? He will show himself strong to you. Do I have any witnesses here today who know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has shown himself awesome and mighty and strong? He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a delivering God. He's a powerful God. I feel a shout down in my soul. He is alive and well. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know who your daddy is, but I know who my daddy is. When I was growing up, my father was a mechanic. He worked on cars. Don't sit down, I'm, I'm almost finished, y'all. Y'all make me feel like I'm preaching when you stand up. So just, I'm almost finished, I'm, I'm coming in, for, I'm about to touch down. I'm gonna tell you this one last thing that I'm gonna touch and I'm gonna be finished. He was a mechanic, he worked on cars. And he, he would want me to come out there and learn his trade. But I hated working on cars. I hated working on cars, don't like working on cars, so I, I never got into it. Then my father was a fisherman, he liked to fish. So he would take me fishing with him, he had a boat and he would take me fishing. I hate fishing. <laughs> I hate putting them nasty worms on the end of the hook. And so I stopped going, I couldn't go fishing with him. But now in retrospect, I realized that God was trying to teach me how to repair broken lives. And God was trying to teach me how to fish for souls and fish for men. And I don't know who's here, but somebody in here today needs Jesus in your life. You need the forgiveness that only Jesus offers. He will forgive you of your sin. I don't care how deep in sin you've been, how long you've been in sin, how recently you've been in sin, the blood of Jesus will wash your sins away and give you a relationship with the eternal God. And my assignment is to invite you to come and give Jesus a try. You done tried everything else and you found out it didn't satisfy you. Jesus will satisfy your inner hunger and longings. Come and say yes to him.
right now is the time for you to come. If that's you, if you need Jesus, get out of your seat. Say to the people around you, excuse me, I want to give Jesus a try. Make your way out and come down here right this moment, right this second, and say yes to Jesus. Right now is the appointed time. That's right, come on, I see you, come, come. Right this moment, right this instant, don't delay it, don't put it off. So proud of you, God bless you, so proud of you. That's right, come on. He will give you brand new life. To Christ. God bless you, brother. God bless you. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. To Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. They're still coming. Keep encouraging them. Keep encouraging them. To Christ. to Christ. So proud of you. God bless you. Amen. Give the Lord a shout for these souls. Now, maybe you, maybe you are backslidden and you need to rededicate yourself to God. Or maybe you're unsure and you need assurance. Right now is the time to come. Or maybe you're already a church, a, a, a Christian, but you need a church. You want to join the church right now, right this moment. I see you coming over there. Come on, amen. Anybody else unsaved, backslidden, you're not sure, you need a church home, right now is the moment and the time to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. I see you coming over here. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So proud of you. 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 Praise the Lord. This is so exciting to me to see all of you coming forward today. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room, sit down, talk with you. They're going to 
share some scriptures with you, find out why you came, and they're going to minister to you. They're going to give you some instructions. Some of you are coming to get saved. You're going to get saved today. You're going to accept Jesus today. Your sins are going to be forgiven today. Jesus is going to come and live in your heart today. It's going to be a change today. Some of you are backslidden, and you're coming to rededicate yourself to God. You're going to get restored in your fellowship with God today. Some of you are not sure you're going to get assurance. Some of you are already saved, but you want to be a member of our church. This here is a great church for you to be a part of. Okay? I'm going to pray for you, then I'm going to send you back with them. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for each one, every man, woman, boy, and girl that has come. And I simply pray for your hand of mercy upon their life. Let them have the a heart of faith and a heart to repent. Manifest yourself to them. Forgive them, cleanse them, and plant them, and fill them with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God.